Hi, this is Andy Scarborough with Crownworks. Today I am coming to you barefaced, not a stitch of makeup on, and my hair not done, totally slept in. But the truth is, it is Sunday afternoon and I wasn't wearing any. And I felt like if I was going to sit and share with you authentically today about why we wear masks in the world, then it felt a little hypocritical to put a full one on first. I'm not gonna lie, you all, I feel really, really self-conscious um, even taping this. I am alone in my apartment right now, but even knowing that I'm filming this with the intent to put it on social media makes me really stressed out because the truth is it's really scary to let someone see you without all of the effort that we put in to making ourselves presentable. And in the beauty industry, that's a really high expectation uh, I think it's kind of funny and ironic that the last video I shot I did right before my salon holiday party and so I had like false eyelashes on and my hair was all flat ironed and today you get me in my Sunday best. Um, but that's, that's the truth. And the whole conversation about masks and why we wear them felt like it really wouldn't be authentic if I wasn't sharing from my own really vulnerable place. So. Pardon the naked face and bedhead, but here we go. We wear masks because from a really early age, especially as women, there are all kinds of things that society tells us we need to do in order to be liked. Now, I was raised in Texas, and there, like, you don't check the mail without a full face of makeup on. Like, there's an expectation about how you dress as almost a sign of respect. When I dress for work to go to the salon, I definitely want to present myself, well, first of all, as someone who knows how to do their own hair, and secondly, you know, for the kind of client that I want to attract, somebody who is fashion savvy and beauty oriented and enjoys putting themselves together, and I most certainly do. I love makeup. Um, I love hair things, and I don't think that there's uh, anything inauthentic about you know, putting a face and makeup on. I know some women who feel really strongly otherwise, that it's inauthentic or somehow um, unfeminist to indulge in things like, you know, hair color or false eyelashes um, or Botox or any of those things. And I really, I have in my own, I guess, exploration of that, come to believe that the only right or wrong is how you judge it and the motivation behind why you're making those choices, whether it's for mascara or curled hair or even washed hair, um, is about fear. Is it a fear that I'm not going to be liked? You know, is it a fear that I'm not pretty without those things? Um, there are all kinds of memes going around about, you know, guys saying, I want, I want her with less makeup or, oh God, she's so ugly without makeup. And it feels like sometimes as a woman, you sort of can't get it right. And so the only thing that I think that we can do is make choices that feel really honoring to us. So today, my, my Sunday best, my self-honoring choice is for no makeup. And I'm sorry, or you're welcome, whichever you take that as. The conversation about masks, though, definitely goes a little deeper than, than just skin and hair. I think that the way we wear masks in the world really filters who we are um, and what we anticipate that people want from us, depending on who we're talking to. So the first time I really became aware that I was wearing a lot of different masks is when I started dating again. And I found myself um, trying to fill out a dating profile and feeling so weird about it because it seemed like people kind of had one or two aspects of themselves that they were putting forward as like their whole identity. And so I thought, gosh, you know, like I'm a, I'm a lot of different things, right? Like I'm a hairdresser and I'm a granddaughter of cattle farmers in Texas. And um, I like fashion and I'm into magic and all of these things. And so I'd find myself going out on a date and going, all right, well, who does, like, who does this person need me to be? 
You know, am I supposed to be the like down home farm girl? Am I supposed to be the boss lady entrepreneur? Am I supposed to be the like holistically minded mystic seeker? Like which of, which of these do you want from me? And the truth is I'm all of those things all of the time. And I found myself really uncomfortable um, and afraid that I was going to sort of say the wrong thing and let a part of me slip out that wasn't what that person anticipated getting. I realized I wasn't only doing that in dating, I was doing it with my clients as well. And so, you know, there's something that happens, I think, when a new client sits down in your chair. And part of, you know, our, our skill set as hairdressers is anticipating what people need. You know, do they need someone to be their buddy? Do they need someone to be their ex, like an expert? Um, do they like to joke about celebrities or whatever? And so you're kind of trying to like feel it out and figure out how to best accommodate that person. Um, but the truth is, I think as hairdressers, we do that so often that we become like chameleons and like change artists that we're someone with our like intimate relationships and dating and we're someone with clientele and then we're a whole nother person with our family. And that was definitely another piece for me. You know, I live in Los Angeles. My family's from a small town in Texas. And so I would find myself feeling really um, self-conscious when I went home about like, oh God, like, you know, if I order my ranch dressing on the side, are they going to think I'm like real bougie now? Or, you know, I remember last holidays going home and, and going to the local bar in town and wearing leggings and a tunic and someone there asking me why I was so dressed up. And I just had this feeling all of the time, like I didn't quite belong. And the truth is like that part of me that I could filter out for them, what I anticipated that they needed belonged. But the reason I felt um, in discord is because I wasn't presenting all of me everywhere I went. And so there was always a feeling of a lack of authenticity or a lack of wholeness because, you know, like a multifaceted gemstone, I was trying to adjust and give them just the angle that would make them the most comfortable. And the truth is that's not really of service to anybody, myself, least of all. I mean, I would invite you to maybe take just a second and think about that for yourself. You know, who are you with your clients? If you're, if you're not a hairdresser watching this, you know, who are you at the office? Who are you in business dealings? And then who are you in your intimate relationships? Who are you on a date? And then again, who are you with your family? And if you are one of those people who feels like, I can say I'm the same, you know, no matter where I go, then kudos to you. Because that's a hard piece of reconciliation to make. And I think in today's world where everything is sort of captured in Instagram post or, you know, encapsulated in little videos or like brief moments of encounters, it's really easy to anticipate what's going to make the other person the most comfortable. But that's not always what does you or the other person or the relationship the most justice. As we meet people, it's really interesting to think um, and it feels very counterintuitive to everything that we've been taught about anticipating what people need and being liked, that the thing that we may be doing for them in service in that encounter, whether it's a client or a date or a family member, is making them a little bit uncomfortable. And it may be that right now, like, watching my face without makeup on is making you a little bit uncomfortable. It's certainly making me uncomfortable to think about it. But that's in service, right? Because that's an invitation for me and, and for anyone else to look at this and say, okay, well, what is it that makes me feel uncomfortable about it? Is it that I don't like her face without makeup on? Is there a belief that someone else may not like my face without makeup on? And that's a really interesting question to ask. So what do we risk in taking those masks off? When we take our masks off, we risk people not liking us. Gross. It's that, it's just that. 
we risk, again, right, the lack of approval. We risk a no. We risk a no thank you. We risk the, well, now I've seen everything that you are. I don't, in fact, like it. And that can be a really scary thing. But then we have to ask ourselves, right, what do we really gain in wearing them? And maybe we do gain approval and we gain more people liking us, but then there's a contingency on those things. You know, if, if you're going to unfollow these videos because you've seen me now without mascara, then truly the depth of, and the meaning of this connection wasn't really all that great to begin with. And it's the same for a date that finds out that I, I grew up on a cattle farm or um, my folks back home who realize I really like skinny non-fat lattes. So sometimes we've been wearing these masks so long that we don't even realize that we have them on anymore. And I think definitely as I became aware of this in my personal life, seeing that in my clientele was an easy way for me to gauge how much of a mask I was wearing and when. So there were a few tells that I kind of discovered about myself. The first tell were keywords. I found that when I was uncomfortable or unsure about offending someone, um, I had a few sort of one-liners that I would repeat that I felt like were kind of canned jokes or safe things. Um, and then it got to the point where I would catch myself about to say it and stop and take a breath and choose to say something different like really plug in for a minute and respond versus sort of quip off something that I knew would kind of pass as safe or acceptable. The other piece is body language. And I think that that was another thing too that I started to realize when I was in situations where I wasn't sure what mask I was supposed to be wearing. Um, and this came up a lot like in dating, I would find myself in really closed off body language, right? I really began to be aware of where I was holding my own body or where I was maybe curved around some of the tender or more vulnerable parts. And that's where I started to learn that that's where I was looking for what mask I was supposed to have on at that point. And again, just like with the keywords, just taking just a moment and stopping and opening up, right? Making a physical shift in that body language tended to really shift the direction of the conversation and the, the content of that moment. And the last piece is wardrobe. You know, I definitely found that there were certain outfits um, that I wouldn't wear home to Texas, things I thought were too loud or too LA or whatever, and the same vice versa here. But I began to realize that that was like the uniform I put on when I was going to play that person. And I think as hairdressers, for most of us, like our wardrobe is all black. And so that I think is also tricky because in all black, we get to sort of be a chameleon, right? It can be anything. And I think that in the safety of that ambiguity, we're not really making a statement about who we really are. So whether you've got something that you wear that feels like a costume, you know, when you're gonna be the fashionista or you're gonna be like the good old girl from back home, um, just to be aware of those choices that you're making and maybe what's motivating that. So we know where the mask came from, why we wear them, what they serve, but how do wearing masks dictate what we create? As artists, so much of the way we present or create in the world um, has a direct effect on whether or not we're wearing our full face or we've got the right uniform on for the part. And there's something about that, you know, I remember hearing a story about a, a Broadway star who went in to record in a studio and didn't come in her full regalia and couldn't record the song. And one of the producers sent her home to go back and get in full costume and makeup. And even though no one was seeing her in the studio, she still performed better than she did plain faced because that got her in the mood. So just as much as we wanna take the mask off to be vulnerable, as an artist, it's okay if you've got a costume that really makes you um, feel more in alignment with what you're creating. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But 
if you are feeling like if you're in one costume, then you don't have permission or you're not giving yourself permission to, to create something that's out of that character's um, realm of expertise, that's where it gets sort of troublesome. And that's something just to be aware of when you start to recognize what mask you've got on when is where that mask may be limiting or dictating what you feel like you give yourself permission to create. When we're really adept at wearing masks and we know we can anticipate what people are going to need from us and how to accommodate, we can definitely have a greater quantity of connections. We can go on more dates, we can have more clients, but the quality and the richness and the depth of those connections aren't going to quite be the same. And so it's just an invitation to consider what kind of relationships do you want? Do you want a quantity of people that only want to see one aspect of you and you have to always be sort of that part of yourself with and fraction off and keep off everything else? Um, that quality and the richness and the totality of acceptance in a few quality deep connections where you know you're safe to be plain faced and 100% all of who you are everywhere you go. And the reason I'm sitting bare faced with you today is because after careful consideration, I myself have come to the decision that I would prefer quality over quantity. And I want to be able to be 100% of myself everywhere that I go. Thanks for joining me today. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at crown underscore works. See you next time.